Before this episode of the Final Word Podcast, a quick update from our friends at Brick Lane Brewing. Brick Lane has loved the feedback from Final Word listeners. They're getting messages online and in person at their Melbourne Tap Room. Did you know they had a Melbourne Tap Room? It's at the Queen Vic Market. Details at bricklanebrewing.com. Thanks for supporting our sponsor and for supporting the show. Adam and Jeff, and in some instances, Daniel Norcross, love doing the show. And your support of the show and of Brick Lane Brewing makes it all possible. And remember, you can order all of your Brick Lane favorites at bricklanebrewing.com. It's a super easy way to get your hands on all of the various brews. Now, let's say you're listening to this and you're thinking, I love the pod. I love Adam and Jeff. I even love Dan Norcross. But you don't drink. How about this? The best hoodie in the world is available in the merch section of the website. The Brick Lane hoodie has been my go-to in Melbourne for the last 12 months. It's roomy, it's comfy, and it's warm. It's perfect. And if you're thinking, don't need warm right now, things are starting to heat up where I am, well, there are plenty of t-shirts to choose from. The point of this is that there are plenty of ways to support The Final Word in Brick Lane Brewing. Just by listening to this, you're helping out. Thank you. Brick Lane Brewing, based and brewed in Melbourne, Australia. Great city, great beer. Thank you, Brick Lane Brewing, for being part of The Final Word, and thank you for listening. That's enough from me. Now, Adam Collins, Jeff Lemon, and The Final Word. Did you know this podcast is powered by Acast? Acast is the home of podcasting. For creators looking for freedom to grow their listeners and make money too. And creative brands looking for smart ways to advertise. Podcasters and advertisers in the know know Acast. It's time you did too. Visit Acast.com to find out more. Acast. For the stories. I had to go. This is the final word daily. The second test between England and India, day one at Lords. I'm Jeff Lemon, and as always, we start this show with somebody having to tell us all about the day in 30 seconds or less. Adam Collins, go. Uh, Joe Root sent India in, which wasn't that surprising, but it didn't really work either. India made it to lunch without losing a wicket. The first wicket partnership was 126 between Rohit Sharma and KL Rahul, who pushed on and made a magnificent century. Uh, he's still there mm-hmm. at the close of play. He also added 106. 17 with Rat Coley for the third wicket. So the foundation is laid. They're 276 for three at the close of play. A couple of wickets for James Anderson between times. The ever reliable playing through something of an injury, but uh, England have a lot of work to do tomorrow with Rahul still there alongside Rahane. Lovely bowling, I reckon you got there just on. Uh, that, that felt like 30. That felt like a clean 30 to me. We'll see. We'll see what the clock says. Uh, the I remember I remember thing. many years ago, Harsha Vogelay saying to us that the longer you do these mm. things for, uh, the easier you can tell what 30, 60 and two minutes feels like. Mm-hmm. I feel like I know what 30 feels like now after all these years making this podcast. <laughs> I, I, I would suspect that's within a second of 30. So a nice way to start. All right, so I need to start by talking to you about one man, King Legend Rahul, ah. <laughs> the, the self-appointed King Legend. Um, the, the extraordinary thing is that this guy wasn't slated to play in this mm. test series. He was a backup. Mayank Agarwal was supposed to be opening the batting, got hit in the head, um, had a concussion, had to sit out the first test, and King Legend uh, wrote his name on the spot uh, so indelibly that he was there for the second test as well. Uh, what made 80 in the first test made 100 in the second. Uh, the two partnerships, I think, are, are the key parts here. He and Rohit Sharma put on 97 in the first test, batted for 37 overs, um, and then batted through more than 43 overs in this innings. That was the key. It didn't really matter how many they scored. They scored at a decent enough clip too, more than three and over across both those partnerships. But with India's 3-4-5 struggling a bit, their one and two have absolutely delivered. What it means is England have to scrap back with the ball rather than taking early wickets, which has been you know, such a big part of the Anderson and Broad story has been early mm-hmm. incisions, right? But they're not getting the chance to apply pressure that way. I understand why Root elected the bowl first. I mean, you look up, it's muggy, lights are on, rain in the air, half an hour delayed start this morning, of course, and they went off early uh, for lunch as well on that basis. And, you know, the pitch can be deceptive at Lords, as we both know. It can often have that tinge of green and be quite flat. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying there was an assistance with the, 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 the very dark red Duke's ball. Of course there was. But, uh, yeah, overall, uh, India played so technically well. I love the fact that Rahul did not strike a four until after Rohit was out. He hit one six, but did not hit a boundary, uh, a boundary mm-hmm. four until, what are we, hour four of the match, hour five of the match perhaps, when you consider rain. Mm-hmm. 
Um, it says a lot about his disposition. And yet, yeah, King Legend Rahul, we learnt that from Dinesh Kartik in a piece of commentary earlier in the year. <laughs> and that's all about his flamboyance. It's all about him puffing his chest out mm-hmm. and taking it to bowlers, at, you know, certainly at T20 or 50 over level. This is a different kind of KL Rahul, playing late, playing with soft hands, Mm -hmm. um, steering through backward point time and time again, accumulation. Uh, And look, I'm not entirely surprised to see it either. When I was in India in 2017, I think he made six half centuries on the trot or something like that. uh, And Mm -hmm. he looks like he was going to be a long-term bankable test opener. Kind of lost his way through 2019 and 2020. But gee, he's back now. Um, I love watching him play. And I'm so happy for him that he's able to take this opportunity that he wouldn't have expected a fortnight ago. Mm. He would have thought that he was here making up the numbers, but instead he's a central figure in what's a really solid platform for India. It would be easy to look at what happened today and think that uh, India dodged a bullet because they wanted to bowl as well. Uh, Had they won the toss, they would have bowled too. It doesn't necessarily follow that England would have been two for 250 at stumps had that been the case uh, because it was... There were good bowling conditions out there this morning. Yep. Uh, James Anderson was swinging it. Ollie Robinson wasn't his absolute best, uh, but he had the new ball, which was felt significant um, given that you know uh, Stuart Broad's not around. Robinson with the new ball was getting it to jag off the seam, um, doing the sort of stuff that he does. Wickets could easily have fallen. Uh, it wasn't really the shots that Rohit Sharma and Kyle Rahul played as their innings went on. It was the strength of their leaving, uh, the decisiveness of it, and the way they stuck to it very rarely being drawn into anything outside the off stump that wasn't very overpitched, uh, very rarely taking risks with their wickets. And they navigated a really difficult passage of play and made it look comparatively easy. So I'm sure Root will be criticised for sending them in, but he doesn't necessarily deserve to be because they could easily have taken three, four wickets in that first session uh, and, and it would have been vindicated. Yeah, what do they say? You're allowed to play good cricket and that's exactly what the openers did. They batted outstandingly well, just to sort of add to what you said there. They left Robinson well on length. At county level, the level below, Robinson gets a lot of wickets where where players offer a shot when when maybe they shouldn't because of his height, uh, but they did so well leaving balls that were just going over the top of the stumps. As for Anderson, who can move it both ways and in those conditions, remember, he had match figures of 9 for 43 in this corresponding uh, test three mm. years ago, uh, but they left him on line, and not only on line, it was how positive their footwork was. I mean, how, how, how out of his crease Rohit Sharma was getting uh, before mm-hmm. shouldering arms. The fact that KL Rahul, just as it was at Nottingham last week, is willing to play inside the line to leave. That's not always an easy thing to do. Uh, it mm-hmm. can get in your head after a while, but he wasn't playing a missing. He was decidedly pulling inside of the line. So I thought that was exceptional. Uh, and like later in the day as well, when things got a bit tough, Anderson takes two wickets. He you know knocks over Rohit Sharma for 83. Mm-hmm. Uh, gutted for Rohit, by the way, his highest score overseas. And, you know, it's easy to talk about the gap between his batting average at home, which I think is 80, and away, which is 30. He never made 100 away from home. It's his highest score for India in Test cricket, not in India mm. today. So uh, it felt like it deserved three figures. But um, it got a good ball from Anderson, a gap between bat and pad, a classic Anderson setup. The ball before beat the outside edge, moving away off the seam. And he landed it in al- almost the identical spot on the pitch. And it was the off cutter. Um, hit the pad onto off stump. You know, that's just fantastic bowling and a great setup mm-hmm. from the old veteran. And then the way he picks up Pajara, playing at one, he probably should have left, well pouched by Johnny Besto. I think it was a third slip, wasn't it? So mm-hmm. at that point, Coley's under pressure, but it was good game management. KL Rahul absorbed so many deliveries from Anderson in that stretch either side of T that I'm pretty sure I'm right in saying that Anderson only bowled two deliveries at Virat Coley in mm-hmm. their entire stash uh, I mean, until on. later on. So, And that's good game awareness from KL Rahul, realising that he's the in man and, and to mm-hmm. manage the ends, making sure that they get to the end of the Anderson spell without the captain being overly exposed to a guy who has had success against him as yeah. recently as last week. I think it was all about management um, in, in the way that the opening pair went about everything from the beginning. It was interesting that England kept trying to change the ball, and I'm pretty sure yeah. that that was only because Sam Curran wasn't swinging it. He, he wasn't really <laughs> getting much assistance to the left armour, but it was moving for Anderson. It, it felt notable to me that uh, all of the boundaries that Rohit Sharma picked up 
through the the first 33 overs it was every boundary came through fine leg just about there was one over where Curran uh, bowled a few loose balls and suddenly Rohit Sharma peeled off four boundaries and took 16 runs from the over but aside from that everything was either leg glance it was pulled down to fine leg uh, an inside edge down to fine leg it just showed how uh, dedicated he was to not playing outside that off stump the only boundary opportunities were when he could come across a little bit and tuck it away through fine leg Um, it, it it just showed how how much discipline there was in that approach. And so it was into the 33rd or 34th over before Rohit Sharma played a drive down the ground against Moen Ali. And, and, you know, that's when Rohit started getting away. Um, Kale Rahul, uh, on the other hand, just just was pretty happy to hang around. He faced well over 100 balls for 20-odd um, before he started going up through the gears uh, and then, you know, ended up having a really polished performance through the offside, a lot of um, square drives and cover drives and, and playing just backward a point and his whole highlights reel is, is pretty much peeling off through the offside. So uh, I, I just thought, yeah, the, the way they balanced that was just about perfect. There were there were very few errors. There were a couple of outside edges, so, you know, a couple of streaky shots, a couple of plays and misses, but very little um, in the circumstances compared to what you would expect. Yeah, Rahul made it to 20 in the 37th over, which gives a sense to how well paced the innings was. The fact that he finishes on, what is he, 127 overnight, I think it is. Uh, that, that, he went through the gears well, which is what you're meant to do after getting set. It's almost the perfect you know, test opener innings in, in some respects. Mm-hmm. You want to see off the new ball, you want to mitigate the risk and you want to be able to transfer the pressure back onto the fielding team deep into the day and, and that's kind of exactly what he was able to do. As for Rowett, I mean, yeah, I felt a bit sorry for Sam Curran in that over because the first boundary, sure, that was a full delivery squeezed out past point but the second one squared him up an absolute beauty and would have been taken uh, had there been a fourth slip in position and then he kind of lost his bundle a little bit and look, I think Curran bowled some yeah. decent spells. He was used quite a lot. I think he's bowled 17 overs so far, Karen, maybe 18 on the first day, which is a lot for the fourth seamer. Um, and that's partly mm-hmm. owing to the fact that Mark Wood, who bowled quick, he bowled quickly today, Mark Wood, and I thought he bowled mm-hmm. some really good spells as well. But you need to acknowledge that Wood can't bowl 20 overs in a day. I think he sent down maybe 12 or 13 today, and that's about his max. And a lot of those overs were bowling with two or three men out on a different sort of day, uh, take, mm. for example, the second day against New Zealand at Lords uh, earlier this year in June. He, he gets a couple of wickets bowling that fierce short stuff. Just didn't quite come off today. He'll, he'll get his chance again tomorrow, though, yep. uh, with the second new ball. But, yeah, I don't think England, again, I don't think they did an awful lot wrong. Maybe they could have used Moe in a little bit more. If you've got mm-hmm. a spinner uh, in the lineup, you, you know, you probably can depend on more overs out of him uh, with the first ball. Uh, maybe some of those Sam Curran overs could have transferred over to Moeen and given him a chance to have sort of dug in at an end. But I, I also understand that they wanted Robinson and Anderson bowling together mm-hmm. when they both looked so threatening. And in the end, it, it, that worked towards the end of play uh, in the last half an hour when, when Robinson found Coley's outside edge for 42. So uh, Coley's streak continues, Jeff. I think you were uh, tweeting quite a lot about it in the final session that he hasn't reached three figures in international cricket for 48 attempts. And that's not through mm-hmm. a lack of being consistent. Uh, it's just that he's, for, for, a, for I guess it's a lack of cricket combined with, well, not a lack of cricket, but um, just a, a run that you go on occasionally uh, as a test cricketer where you don't get quite get to three figures whilst you're still yeah. making a contribution a la Alan Border in the late 80s, for example. That's that's exactly where it's at. So interestingly, across 48 innings, ac- across all three formats for India, um, a year and nine months it's been, he's averaging 42. That's what he made today, 42. Um, sure. Douglas Adams, the, the, the answer to the, the meaning of life, the universe and everything. But the partnership was really important. 117 that he put on with KL, um, that really mattered as well to stabilise things. I thought Coley looked good today after being you know a little bit dicey in, in his first sort of 10, 15 minutes, but he played a couple of on drives, which um, generally means that he's up and running pretty well. As you said, it was very smart management by KL to make sure that he faced only those two balls from Anderson and Coley was able to, to get into his groove uh, as things went on and, and yeah, got a good one late in the day and sort of had to play at it with the angle in um, and then it decked away a little bit. It was that length as well. Coley could have left that on length if he'd been more confident to do it. Um, but you don't really want to trust doing that on an English surface. So that's where they're at. As far as England's positioning, um, they've they've never sent a side in, uh, in England and had that side get to two for that many. Uh, that's never happened before. They've had a, a handful of sides get to a, a higher score three down. 
um, but they've never they, they've never gone that badly for for two downs. So it wasn't a great day for them. Um, but you know you 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 roll the dice and and you see how they fall. I suppose uh, the King Legend is clearly both of our player of the day. So we'll skip you mm-hmm. on that. We've given him enough love already uh, for our final word daily Hall of Fame. Yep. I'm going to kind of nominate one of those anti Hall of Fame. And sorry to be a pest, okay. but um, it stopped raining at Lords according to various reports somewhere between 10 to 1 and 5 to 1 right yeah so if you were going to call lunch at one o'clock at that point okay that's a little bit frustrating given they'd already adjusted lunch to 1 30 but go ahead crack on call lunch at one o'clock but they lose another 10 minutes prevaricating and then they call it at 10 pa- 10 past one which is somewhere mm-hmm. between uh, somewhere between 20 or 15 and 20 minutes after the rain stopped i mean again i feel like sometimes we just need someone who's on the tools there And I know that's the match referee's responsibility to an extent, but Mm -hmm. someone is looking at the bigger picture about when we take meal breaks because it looks ridiculous that we missed a stretch of cricket before lunch to rain, then it stopped raining, and then Mm -hmm. they took 40 minutes off after wasting 15 minutes before the 40. So... Yeah, again, it's a it's a it's an ongoing an ongoing whinge, but they, they could have done a better job of that. Okay, two two noms for me for my Hall of Fame. We did get ninety overs in today. Admittedly, yes. it took until about half past seven, but we did actually. It was see the last, they got it. They got it in the last the last minute. They they got in at seven twenty one. Uh, they got mm. there, which was the the, the official cut off time. Yep. But my other one is that uh, Rohit Sharma has had this tendency over the last year or so to make a really nice 30, 40 or 50 and then play a pull shot and be caught off the top edge at fine leg. Uh, he did it in the previous test match. He did it in almost all of the test matches in Australia today. Gets to his 50th run, salutes the crowd, gets a short ball, hooks it, top edge to fine leg. Um, and the lucky thing for him was that it was Mark Wood who bowled it, so it was about 96 miles an hour, so it carried the rope instead for six. But, you know, had it been anyone else bowling, he would have been caught down there again for 50. Stop playing the bloody shot, Road Sharma, please. I quite liked it on the basis that I, I, I enjoyed that bit as well, but he kind of went from down to up. So even with the top mm. edge, it was likely to kind of go all the way. But, yeah, you've got to love a guy who falls that way regularly happy hooker you could almost call him mm-hmm. uh, but he's not going to put it away Rohit Sharma nope. knows his game <laughs> all right this has been the final word daily we'll be back every day that's what the daily indicates uh, every day of this test match every day of this test series that's the way it goes Jeff Lemon and Adam Collins if you want to support the show have a look at patreon.com slash the final word otherwise keep your eye on the channel see you soon bye so you know what I meant I had to go about it write it out Sometimes even when you know getting outside will give you energy, it can be hard to find time to actually do it. But if you only have a few minutes, you can listen to Take in the Outdoors with Nature Valley Granola Bars. This new immersive experience bottles up the sensations of hitting the trail so you can recharge with nature whenever you need it. Find it everywhere you listen to podcasts or ask your smart speaker to open Nature Valley Trails. Thanks for listening to the Final Word Cricket Podcast. All of Adam and Jeff's previous episodes are available at FinalWordCricket.com, including their most popular episode of the last 12 months, The Final Word with Marcus Stoinis. If you're new to The Final Word, I suggest you check it out. If you've been around for a while, but you missed it, you should also track it down. And if you heard it when it first came out, you were quietly nodding and thinking, yes, that was a special chat. FinalWordCricket.com for all things Final Word. And thanks again to our friends at Brick Lane Brewing. Shop online at BrickLaneBrewing.com. Thanks for listening. More from Adam and Jeff real soon.